Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Teddy. We can't stop snapping. A huge episode for you guys. We're diving in with a mega data mine with so many new things, new features to talk about. We had a new card release, cosmetic shop updates, the future of Snap is... It was, some might not say bright, based on some of the optics in that shop pricing. The wallet is looking tough, but... Uh, the card game is looking prettier and better than ever. Brad, let's start with some good news. The very best thing to come out of this data mine, and I know we're all thinking it, but here we go. The high Jeff variant line. Ah! <laughs> New variants for Storm, Wave, and Iron Lad have been leaked where you got itty-bitty Jeff. Um, he's gnawing on the lightning and Storm. He's jumping through the wave with Wave, and he's in a little suit with Iron Lad, and I'm here for it. I don't care what these cost. This is the first time that I've I've said that about a variant, Brad. Um, I'm all well, in. Lucky for you, soon enough there's going to be a um, like we already see in the newest update. Spotlight variants now have the spotlight tag above them. Yeah. Um, eventually, those will be available in the shop to purchase with gold, uh, but we don't know how much yet. So I'm sure they're going to be more expensive than a regular super rare or whatever yeah do you put it at like 1500 or do you think it's like a 2k um i hope they do 1500 less is better always yeah yeah, yeah. um but i wouldn't be surprised if they're like 2000 or whatever i mean yeah the optimist in me is gonna say they could just be a 1200 variant but the realist in me says i think 1500 is what they'll do right yeah so i mean speaking of the patch we have the cool Jeff thing with like the different variants of like that. Uh, we had no balances on this. So yes, that's the one to thing the current to keep playable in cards. We have seen changes to some of the upcoming cards, um, but nothing right. currently in the meta. The Gwenpool season is what has been um, data mined now. Yeah, supposed to be in ties with um, the Deadpool Wolverine. Yes, because um, we have we... the villain making an appearance as a card. Yeah, Cassandra Nova, which we'll talk about in a yeah. moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. Worth noting for the nerds that love comics, yes, Gwenpool has literally nothing to do with Deadpool. She is her own character. She is only named Gwenpool because her name is literally Gwendolyn Pool, P O O L E, and that's where she gets her name from. And the reason her suit looks like Deadpool's is because there was an actual, genuine miscommunication between marvel and the artist they commissioned to make her design and they assumed <laughs> she was going to be a, a female version of a Deadpool. gender bender what have you yeah yes i recommend reading her her issues they're actually phenomenal she has some cool comics she does break the fourth wall like that i mean in a ways it feels like it's lining up in a lot of ways man right but beyond breaking the fourth wall and her looking like Deadpool. She is and her sounding vastly like different. Deadpool. Okay. Also, the big thing okay. with her is so Fighting Deadpool with breaks. Oh uh, yeah. Again, the artist thing. The the Deadpool breaks the fourth wall, but he doesn't really utilize that as like a a mechanic, I, I guess, of, of himself. Like he's just like he's just like, hey, what's up? kind of thing. Uh, Gwenpool actually uses it to her advantage and it's one of her powers of being aware that she's in a comic book. <laughs> so it's it's different. It's, it's uh, okay. uh, I I really recommend it. It's really good. It's, also, uh, her ability is different. If you guys were here, one of the OGs who did our deep data mine in, in Vision, this was one of the cards we called out could not release in the state that it was originally yes. data mined in. So now completely revamped. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, Brad. Teddy Seal cannot release in this state either. Current data mine of, of Gwenpool, yes. way too busted. So let's get to that because we have a bunch of data mines. Um, I guess before we get to that, real quick, oh, they no. did release the borders and the, they made it so the custom cards can actually change between variants for your split. So that's cool. That was um, very nice. Yes, I think that's awesome. And I had a lot of fun going through cards and because being like, what does this look like? What does this look like? This is correct. Me, I have not delved too deeply into splitting myself, Brad. But this means that if I have like, I have a noir on my Loki now, if I get a new variant of Loki, I could put the noir on it. Right. 
Yes. Perfect. So it's, uh, it's cool. Um, I, I, I love that. It's, uh, you just can't mix and match. Like if you have like a noir split and like a red crackle split, but yes. they're not the same thing. Right. You can't just be like, I want this and I want this one. Right. You they can't say that, Hey, separate. I wanted that white crackle that I got with my foil and the noir effect. I still have to keep splitting for a noir with a white crackle, but when a new variant comes out that I love, I can just update it with the split and effect that I like. Right. Yeah. So that's great. I'm very happy with that. I'm not going to spend much time on this quick, like 20 seconds. Uh, I like, I like this. I like the borders themselves. Yeah. I don't I like, the, like the price. I don't like the price. Yeah. Um, I well, actually, let me, let me rephrase. I actually don't mind the price if I could just say, oh, you spend 900 gold, you get the gold metallic one for every single, you just have gold metallic and you can just pop it on whenever you want. Yes. Or even if it was 20 cards. Yeah. Something like that. Like I, I, I would be less inclined to dislike it, but for now it's just a single pop to each one. And it's like per card basis. Yeah. So if you want to complete an entire deck of 12 cards at 900 oh no uh, that's that's a it's a good amount of money it's crazy and what's even crazier is that i'm actually in a position where i might buy multiple for loki because loki applies Mm. it to your whole everything and then i get to see what everything like looks like samesies and then that might inform decisions later yeah Yeah. and look they look cool and they're gonna have more Yes, they're going to be releasing these as rewards eventually. Yeah, they've um, said that they're going to create new ways to earn them. They didn't say free, by the way. They just said new ways to earn them. Correct. Um, but I'm assuming they, that will uh, ultimately be a free-to-play path to getting some cool swag on your borders. Oh, so. But yeah, for now, like it, I understand you can just ignore it. You can just not get it. But like yeah. it just feels... A lot like of them if you, it's looks just so very much. similar to what you can already get, like red neon, yellow neon. Those are just what you already have. Right, they're are they're already pretty close, especially if you are on low settings. Keep in mind, if you are playing the game on low settings on mobile or PC, I guess uh, these look like nothing. They look really bland and bleh. Yeah. So keep that in mind if you uh, if you got to play in that regards. I uh, want to throw in here that I soon. like the game direction going to more monetization around cosmetics rather than card acquisition. My hope is that it frees up the developers' space to give the community something in terms of card acquisition, maybe with tokens, maybe with keys, what have you. Um, and I can't wait to see more cosmetics come in, like unique voice lines, and hopefully, ultimately, we get boards. Uh, that's my number one cosmetic grail right now. Boards. Yeah. Change my side of the asteroid. I've been playing on that asteroid for... Oh, uh, Brad... <laughs> I'm going to embarrass myself now looking up my Steam settings, my my time in game. 2,143 <laughs> hours on the same asteroid. Like, this is too much time. That's not even counting what I've played that's, on my phone. That's only on which Steam. Which is probably... Right. Yeah, it, that's only on Steam. So, there's these. They're cool. Uh, I like them. Hopefully, they yeah. just make them a bit more accessible later on. Uh, let's get into the fun stuff. Uh, so, possibly oh, yeah. a new mode. Um there is in the data mines web shot lucky draw promo yes. what is lucky draw something big enough to have a promo for in the web shot uh web shop sorry and then there's new feature uh high stakes table so curious is what these could be let's try to figure them out we so always give throw out a couple guests um lucky draw feels okay. like um every game is di- district x Every game is different decks? District decks, basically. So like, like you you launch with a random assortment of 12 cards oh, and it's yeah. like lucky draw. Not that the district yeah. decks is always the location. Oh, I'm just I saying like that. <laughs> you spawn in random deck. <laughs> I would hate that so much because I have actually been for a while hoping that district decks would get changed to both players get the same set of random cards shuffled mm. obviously but then every time you draw one just the, like the idea that you know that could be a possibility for the opponent makes that uh game with district x so much more interesting um i'm gonna say that this is an ex 
expanded deck size. Like mm. the lucky draw, you could be playing with deeper decks. Kind of like, um, what's the new character that adds the random cards to your already selected deck? Uh, Arsham. Yeah, Arsham. Um, something like that. Or even if it was, they just doubled every card in your deck and you could play with multiples just to see what that'd be like. Like a 24 card deck where you have two of every card you selected. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be interested. I feel like you have to have more board space, but I mean, yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, what do you think about, about high stakes tables? That one like I, makes me think of like a poker room and it's like you go to the high stakes room and it's like, I'm not sure. Oh, like, are okay. You, okay. You are just you gave betting, me a whole new idea. Like, Is this the, the battle royale? Is eight? Is this the battle royale of Snap where you're in a pool of like eight players and you play, 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 and then like, you know, it's like a conquest match, but instead of playing the same person over and over again, you're trading tables with like your cumulative health. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Or just like you join a bracket, like kind of thing. It's like, oh, Brad, you're killing my excitement. You're killing the mood, man. (laughs) Playing like um, team fight tactics tables but you it's you running a game of snap against somebody and then your cumulative health that'd be so much fun yeah it I could think... also be like what if it's just for a weekend all games start at two cubes you know i was gonna say because high stakes just... rounds are round five in conquest where you start at two you still have a limit of eight but you start at two so what if that was just like in ranked for a brief time period I was just gonna think it was like its own mode where it's like the 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 ceiling is sixteen cubes and like I said you start at two, so when you snap the first snap it goes to four, opponent snaps back goes to eight, and then second sn- or the next snap or whatever, um, or if they if they snap back it ends up going to sixteen, right? We well, finish the final at sixteen. The final show takes you to sixteen. The snapping right. doubles and then the final turn takes you. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. If your opponent reciprocates the snap, I mean. Right, like but then you also it, have to play the final turn. Well, yeah, 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 I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, like the ceiling is 16. Yes, it just starts at two. Okay, so everything's doubled. Yeah, um, I think but it's be own fine. mode, so you could opt into playing or not. Yeah, I don't know how. Uh, there's no way that can be a part of a ranked. Also, I don't even know if I'd really care about that because, like, what, like, if you're gonna have double. Stay. I, mean, I guess maybe it, maybe it is part of ranked ladder. Like it's it's a more high risk, high reward kind of thing. Yeah. Like you can it now feels join. Like it has to be best of one kind of forced or high onto the ecosystem to have an impact. Otherwise, yeah, people just opt out. I actually think that my middle idea in there is the most likely that it's just game start at two, but still limit of eight because that matches the high stakes rounds in conquest. Right. No, it makes sense. We're just hoping for like crazier things. Battle you know? Royale. Yeah. Yes, clearly. <laughs> uh, so next, <laughs> going down to the uh, the data mines. So, oh, baby, we got Hydra Bob. It's Bob from Hydra Bread. You might say scraping the bottom of the barrel. They don't know what they're doing. I say hitting their prime. <laughs> this is the, these are the characters. <laughs> so Drew Barry I even posted... Drew Berry posted a car- a, a custom card that he made back in yeah. like 2022 on the, during the beta. And yeah. it's like the same exact stat line and it also moves. He's just like, for some reason, it had ongoing moves for each turn or whatever. And he's like, I don't know why I, I did that. But it, <laughs> he knocked it out of the park essentially, right? Yeah, so, second dinner saw it and they were like, Bob from Hydra will <laughs> yeah, do, do that. You think, do you think someone <laughs> saw it two years yeah. ago and they're like... Like, oh, shoot, we don't have a card that does that yet. Oh, that, that has to be in the game. I love it. It's thematic. It's uh, He wants to be with the winners. He doesn't want to be with the losers, obviously. So after each turn, it moves to another location if you are losing here. I mean, it's just Silk. That's how my Silk plays <laughs> the game, pretty much. So right. And Silk is fine. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's a 2-5. It's probably going to be pretty good. Um, yeah. Also, you know, again, late game in control decks or whatever, like as like a replacement to Lizard, if you don't want to run Enchantress, um, oh, yeah. you just play it in a location where you're like, yeah, where it moves, I win. If it stays, I win. I don't really care. Like, I, I don't know. It's fine. 
I mean, we're going backwards though, but if we're going to go backwards, Teddy, we're committing. Okay. We're going to Cassandra Nova next. Teddy, do you know who this is? I, okay. Sorry. I'm going to be brutally honest. I have no idea. When I saw the trailer, I thought it was an alternate reality version of the Sorceress Supreme from the first Dr. Strange. Yeah, it it looks like that in the two. Yeah. So that's the unfortunate. Okay, thank you. Like, At least you're giving credence to my embarrassment here. Like, right. I, hopefully, okay, I was so not alone. Remember, uh, they did change the um, uh, the Sorcerer Supreme to the Sorceress Supreme in yeah. uh, in Doctor Strange because yeah. in the comics it's like, okay, look, pe- time out, R- real quick, real quick, real quick. Because okay, I'm remembering people, remembering people were really pissed about that initially because they're like, "Oh my god, it's woke garbage." We have a she woman was an amazing the, character. What the heck? Not only that, not only that. Have you have you seen the original character of like the in the comics? I think so. Also, I've, it's I mean, just the original... a racist caricature of an Asian man. Doctor Strange got, is also really weird Manchu. in the original comics. Yeah, right. They're all kind of weird. They're superhumans. They're going to be weird. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of things that don't carry over well to comics. Like pe- the people that like s- complain about that kind of thing. And I've been seeing it so much lately because I saw people talking about like, f- like, okay, Fallout's fantastic, by the way. But I, there's a select group of people. I've not gotten uh, to that of, one like, yet. The incels and stuff like that. They're like, this doesn't make sense. All the men are incompetent and the women are strong. That doesn't make sense. And it's like, okay, you know what? You know, an easy way to, for people to realize that that's not that big of a deal. Teddy. What percentage would you say of women that could beat you up? What? I'm going to repeat that. And I'm serious. What percentage of women on the planet Earth that are like, you know, adult women could beat you up? The audio is blipped a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to put the percentage at very low. Okay, I would say there's probably a solid twenty no, Brad, I'm not twenty-five percent of the call that could beat me up. Because if you look at like pure size, and now we're having technical difficulties, unfortunately, because of course it's going to be doing that. We love it when it does that. Is it back? Are we good? Are we good? Going to keep it rolling. My whole point is like there are women in the UFC. There are women in mixed martial arts. There are women that have black belts and shit like. Yes, there are women that can be more competent than men because they are more skilled. They're better fighters. There are women I've seen that are better at their job than respective men in that same position. So the idea of like, whatever, I'm getting on a tangent. doesn't matter. Are we good? I hear you now. Hello? All right. Amazing. I already yapped long enough. Essentially, ignore what I was talking about. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Back to Cassandra Nova. I'm we can not talk about. E- we'll I'm talk about Fallout this. once I've seen it. Okay, we'll talk about Fallout once I've seen it. You want to do a uh, a watch along, a little commentary thing? No, nope. that sounds insufferable. I'll just watch it, then we'll talk about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to do that for bad shows? Ooh, like uh, you know what? Let's not yeah. Secret Invasion because I don't want to watch that again. I don't either. That yeah. was just not even. The, there's some levels of bad where it's enjoyable. That one wasn't even enjoyable. It was just boring. yeah. That's the problem. Is it, like it has to be the right kind of bad show, right? Right. Like lost. Maybe maybe the acolyte will be the right kind of bad show. Maybe. Okay. All right, Cassandra Nova. <laughs> uh, she's basically, long story short, she's essentially the twin sister of Professor X, but not actually the twin sister. I don't think they're actually blood related. He's like she's like the dark shadow version of him. Um, I think there are some issues where she actually is. You know, she was in the womb, but then doesn't have a body. Um, so basically, the original thing is they were in the womb together, but she never had a body. She was just like the essence and like shadow of him, essentially. Um, I could be wrong. Someone can correct me if they want to. Uh, and then she She's has actually all the powers of the him. twin of a Koye, the dark twin of a Koye in game. Yes. Perfect. Wonderful. She's just evil Professor X. She can walk. She's not in a wheelchair. It's great. 
Uh, she is terrifying <laughs> as an enemy. Why are the women better than the men? <laughs> oh, because <sorry>. they can <laughs> be. <laughs> Three one what on reveal drain to uh, drain to one Professor power X. from each card in your opponent's deck. Also, Professor X could walk at birth. Like it's fine. He just got injured later on. Um, yeah, drain is a Weak. new phrase, but. <laughs> It right. feels like it's just going to be afflicting and like down ticking power on the opponent's deck, right, Brad? That's what I think. It could be. Um, there's a chance that it's she drains and then gets plus for each one she drains. I was going. Thank you. I was going to say she seems terra bad if she just debuffs what's in the opponent's deck if she can add that power drained to her body that's the only way this is playable right right so on turn three how many cards are left in deck right so you're at uh after turn one you're at uh, six? eight you're at six so she's a three seven on average yeah like that's that's fine Ooh. obviously if you play her later on in the game she's doing nothing um, what happens but, if she hits a card that's uh, zero or negative in power? If 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 she does add, like, does she just does she still gain a one? Because she's yeah, technically and, taking away still. She so right. I think they would go deeper in the negative, and she would just go up because there's no like so minimum on what her. What about her and Darkhawk? In that case, well, give them add all the rocks. Yes, right. let's go. And then because the rocks are negative. Corgon one. Um. We don't have anything on two right now, but then Cassie here on three, you hit the extra rock. All right, second dinner. It's time. It's time. Rock slide yeah. a two-two. Let's do it. Bring him on. We you've haven't already, seen him at the two-two. You've already changed him so many times. What's one just more? Give us one, one more iteration. More? Especially because Black Widow is now the three cost, and like you just you you do it's that. It's smooth. It's right. smooth. You want you want that, and especially because Sabu is not a card anymore. We need a not two a card. cost. It's not a real card. Also, if you could go Abs Man, follow up on Cassie, taking away starting at the four four, but doing the same drain, and then just debilitating the opponent's deck even farther down sounds very funny right i also forgot the screen share whoopsie daisy uh cassandra nova for our viewers uh three one <laughs> on reveal drain one power from each card in your opponent's deck so yeah we we think it'd be she because she's a three one she has to like actually like add her the power to her there's yes. no way yeah because yeah opposite <laughs> otherwise there's no way <laughs> all right well let's hope so ajax this one's cool uh, four four ongoing plus one power for each card in play afflicted with negative power. That's so, you and your opponent. This could be, I mean, Hazmat Ajax on the final turn is an easy six mana split, and it could be an enormous Ajax. Or mm -hmm. you could play your Hazmat mid game, pop down a Mega Ajax, and then follow up with the Luke Cage to pick your side back up. It's a lot of fun stuff. I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I, I love playing like Toxic Sarah and stuff like that and like any kind of affliction things. Oh, never mind. You never play Luke Cage. He's ongoing. <laughs> He's ongoing. You don't want to buff your side. You just want as many cards hurt as possible, and then you go Ajax. Well, I don't know, because like I think there's something to like, you know, if you have like Man Thing or US Agent down and stuff like that. True, true. Um, like those are just ongoing hitting stuff. Uh, and then right. like I, I think it's okay in that case to have Luke Cage and just have this be another yeah, tall it, version of the deck or tall option in the yeah. deck, I should say. So sometimes that deck is like missing that just like points. It's like I had my utility cards, I was debuffing them, but I never made enough points myself. And Ajax could be that way. Right. Yeah, I think he's going to be pretty solid. I I, I can't see also, him I mean, not being could, good. Uh, Onslaught, Mystique, Spectrum. I mean, right. these are cards that are all on the bubble and ongoing synergies. Ooh, so. Spectrum is interesting because you could go like US Agent, Man Thing, right? Those are those are just afflictions in general. And just, you know, a Man Thing hitting a couple cards makes this a 4-6. That's already technically right. above rate. Um, and then a 4-8 from Spectrum. I mean, you know, that's cool. Uh, oh, yeah. That. Could be interesting. Uh, 
Next one is you can do typhoid cat. Mary, right? Hey, hold oh, on, hold yeah, on. Yeah, typhoid oh, right, Mary right. hits your whole side, and then Ajax just sucks up all the power into himself. Like there's right, there's cool stuff out there. Oh, that's actually an interesting way to put it. Like she gives minus one to minus one everything, but he effectively gives the plus ones back. Yeah, because it doesn't say each other, so he counts himself. Yep. So straight up, like it's just like transferring everything to him. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. I, I actually, fun. he's the one I'm looking forward to the most, uh, to be honest. Unless Cassandra's, you know, is the drain thing, like we're saying. Then maybe I her. think she is. I think she is. Uh, copycat, 3 5. When you draw this, steal the text from the bottom card of your opponent's deck. Oh my gosh, Brad. It is a card and a half. 3 5 that does something. That alone tells you this is playable and yep. then steal the text. So remember guys, this is when drawn. This is another new thing for us. Something that I think we've both said we really want to see is mm-hmm. draw effects, not play effects, not ongoing effects, draw effects. So yep. you know what effect you're getting. It's not like morph that's like, oh, it's a clown. Whatever happens when you play him happens. You get a no, so you get to plan around it. And in mill, it could actually matter that you took that ability away. If you're cutting them down so they draw that final card that then doesn't have an ability it would be pretty spicy and you're going to know what that ability is so like you know if like oh if it's infidot you probably want to take that for yourself in a mill situation if it is iron man yeah you want them to draw that you know stuff like this ah it's super cool super cool yeah i think i don't know like it feels like three five might be too good it might be Especially because stealing, it zeroes your opponent's thing and you yes. just have it. Now, there will be times where, like, you know, it's not really beneficial to play her because the effect might be, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, consequential to your own game plan. But for the most part, M-Dog. she, yeah, like a Modog. But I don't know. Maybe that's why she should be a 3 5 because I, I, I don't think there's going to be more bad effects for you than good. Well, especially in the metagame of Snap has always been, with few exceptions, two or three decks, right? So you can largely expect what you're going to get, and you're going to run a mirror match a lot of the time. In which case, stealing something and pasting that effect on a 3-5 has to be good. Um, Man, it has to be good. Yeah. We have said, like... We've been waiting for an Iron Lad nerf for forever, and now everybody's just fine with him being a 4-6. So maybe a 3-5 is okay. Uh, <laughs> this is just new snap. Like, this is what modern snap is. It's a 3-5 that does something. 3-5 is new 3-4. <laughs> it kind of that is. simple. All right, this is the one that you say cannot be put into the game, and I will have to agree yep. with you. Yep. When pool a 4-4 four, four, on reveal, pick a random card in your hand four times, Give plus two power each time. So Sebastian Shaw is uh-huh. crazy. Anybody? Anybody? Brood? Um, the uh, Black Panther? Yep. Iron Man? Or, you know what? We don't even have to talk about synergies. This no. is just a Wakandan embassy for um, your yeah. cards more often exactly. than not. Like, like, Swarm? Uh, I don't know, like, ooh, I wonder in discard if you could, like... <clears throat> Guys, if you can play all target. the cards, she's a 412. It's insane. Right. And there might be with ways to no, actually, like, be aggressive with your it's, curve. It's and, on like, reveal, Brad. You could go abs man after this, who's also a 4-4. You could just... This is, like, hand buff oh, has happened. Oh, you're right. Hand buff is here, baby. Wong into this. Oh man, <laughs> this what is are they thinking really good. There's it no way can't this, happen. Gonna, this can't happen. No. This is gonna be plus one, right? Or she's a much worse stat line. Like, if she was a five cost, or if she had no power on her own body, that's the only way I'm okay with this. Uh, I like yes. the ability. Let her be a zero power so we can put her in Mr. Negative and thank with you. That plays Wong. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited for that. Right. So I, it's, here's the thing. Mr. Negative had a blip there in the meta where it was like, this is kind of annoying. And then he's gone again. So I don't know if it's I like... I lost vibe. Mr. Negative today on stream in a Conquest yeah. game. Yeah. 
it was I don't know great. if it's valid to say that he actually sways balancing any of the cards anymore. He definitely used to, but right now I don't know if he does. Should he go back to a 4-4 four, four Teddy? Oh, should he? Heck yeah. Let me have that. No. You're supposed to say no. That's awful. I'll play it. Yeah, you'll play like it. Those. Everyone will play I, it. I like those decks. All right. Well, uh, th- these are the data mines. They're cool. Also, one more card. There's <laughs> oh, a the best. Jimmy Tonga. Everybody loves the Jimmy's. So this is from a new location called Taco yep. Bus. Right. Or Taco. Is it Taco Bus? Let me check. Let me go back. Down. Yeah. The Taco I'm, Bus I'm is hitting with the things. Jimmy Tonga. Taco Truck. Taco Truck, Teddy. We're, feels, we're both wrong. Oh, also, Fox Will like is coming back in regular Thank rotation. You. That's cool. Anyway. Uh, this is a zero two that says unreveal merge this one of your cards here. The flavor is fantastic, both because I love chimichangas and thank second, you because uh, I mean it looks yeah. like they're going with some avocado slices and some lime as well. So it definitely right. hitting it up on the flavor. Right, right. Uh, there's a restaurant near me that's a uh, that's called Tijuana Flats. It's a Florida based restaurant that does like Mexican food, yep. and they have this insane sauce bar that has mm. like. 12 to 20 pumps of random hot sauces and stuff and everything hey. they've done, it's so good uh they just filed for bankruptcy and i'm really sad hopefully they don't the the article said south florida <laughs> like, but like when, i don't know what that means when you close down i'll come by and i'll take the so- hot sauce bar <laughs> yeah please please can i have it like these are they're yeah. so good and they have a chimichanga that I, I always get when i go there and i'm like oh i can feel my heart stopping this is so yep. good like when next you, episode, you the back know, of Brad Studio is a hot sauce bar, <laughs> dude. I would, I would gladly have that. Like, could you imagine being able so to cool. just have a hot sauce? Like, even okay, look, even if it doesn't work, I will just no, take it, the stands. Yeah. Like, just let because right. it's like a circular thing. It's got the pumps and stuff. Like, I'll just yep. put like, I don't know. I feel like Brad would. <laughs> You would take that and you would set them up like you would repurpose most of them as like tequila and like beer and whatnot. Ooh, but then just yes. one or two are still straight hot sauce. <laughs> it's like, Sometimes hey guys, you got to make roulette, a Bloody huh? Mary, Teddy. What are you, what are you talking <laughs> oh, about? That's going to be Side a note, bloody heart. Bloody Marys are great. I'm tired of pretending that they're not. I mean, I'm all for tomato juice, but I don't know if I want it in my alcohol. I'm here for have a you good ever time. had? Have you ever had pepper vodka? Pepper vodka? Yeah, I like vodka. So there's there's a you can get flavored all kinds of vodka, but there's a pepper vodka that's distilled in peppers, so it's spicy vodka, and it is what Ooh. I it is what I use for my Bloody Marys at home okay. all the time. A little bit of hot sauce. I will. If I'm ever given the pleasure of meeting you in person, I will partake. Everybody out there, enjoy responsibly. Yeah, and let us know in the comments what kind of insane thing Brad should make for me if this ever happens. Oh, back to the data mines. We have the Young Avengers variants. I was going to say we have one more card that we we missed, but my internet. Oh, wait, I go back to Sage. Yeah, Sage is now a three zero instead of a four one. How much does this update on Sage move the needle for you? Makes her a card and surfer now. Which honestly sounds pretty also effective because she, if you just want another point Because generator. she counts herself, there are less zero right. power cards in the game than there are one power cards. So By a lot. So yeah. yeah. I like this. I love moving it. Um, I still don't. I think she's going to be a pass <laughs> if you're budget conscious. Um, but if you're already interested in her, this of course makes her more interesting. Yeah, I think. I mean, she was garbage as a four one, I think. But now she yeah. actually climbs a bit. Like, if you have, like, let's see, you need what three cards, including herself, so two other cards for her to be a three six, and that's like, I think that's the floor you want her to be a three six. Right. So I think that's way more. That feels better, right? Because a four a four seven is oh, just like, sure. eh, what are we doing? Yeah, right. Now, of course, she scores off of opponents' cards right. too. So she is she's at three cost. You don't really want to play on tempo, which has always hurt cards. Like you want cards to be good on tempo and in combo. She's but really only good in way combo. Way better in negative but now. Way better in negative Long. now. We got that off. 
I don't All care. Right. Well, anyway, <laughs> like you were saying, we got the Young Avengers. Go ahead. Kate Bishop, we've got to dive a little deeper in because we're getting what could be big, bad level complexity because we also have data mind trick arrows. We have acid arrow, basic arrow, grapple arrow, and pim arrow. Yep. No stat lines or abilities for the arrows or for Kate. So but, I think it's easy to figure out what they do, Teddy. Yeah. So let's start with the acid arrow. This clearly afflicts something by one. Yeah, debuffs okay. it by a little Basic bit. Basic arrow. Uh, destroys. Just power. I was going to say basic arrow destroys. A one uh, cost? Something, something it's an smaller than her, I would imagine. Like oh, less okay. power than her. Interesting. I would have said that this is just, it plays power for your side of the board. Okay, I can, I can take that. Uh, the next one was the grapple arrow. This moves something. Yeah, it, it, you play it on a location, and then it moves a card, an opponent's card, from that location to Kate's location. Yep. Uh, then Pim arrow. Uh, this one, usually, this one would make it small or big. So yes, I don't know how that would translate to game. I would okay. It's going to be wild, but like make it an expensive card and make it cut an opposing card's power by half. I would love a scaling debuff. What like if it's that. just an Iceman effect and it hit this one attacks hand? Oh, uh, okay. What actually, With a cost increase what if, or what a if debuff? All of these attack hand. Grapples from hand, shoots into hand, and then acid into hand. The grapple is weird, but maybe. Yeah. Is she, are you firing at your own hand or your opponent's? Ooh. Does she have a jubilee, but she can like grapple one of your cards from hand to her side of the board? Also, there's a chance that some of these could just affect your opponent and some of them affect you. Where it's like True. random I card mean, here or last card you played or random card on your side. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, is it just the pin was the last one? There's just that many? Okay. Yes. So we have those four. Um, they, Of course, the, the release is a ways out. There could be something that they haven't released the art for, but I imagine not. Um, the curious thing is how are these arrows created? Does she, when you play her, create one of these randomly in hand? Does she make all of them? Does she make two of them? Does she add them to your deck at the start of the game? Does she add them to your hand when you play a card to her location? So it's like a hope effect, right? Instead of giving you energy, it gives you mm -hmm. a trick arrow. Or it's a lot of a lot of possibilities it, on how is this is it could like work. a Nico where it's like it's a, it's the spell, but it's the arrow yeah. for whatever. Um, yep. Or it could be and it so could be a spin off Nico, but instead of it being yep. a thing in hand that rotates, what if it's for each turn she's on board? you get a random arrow to your hand. Yeah, that she just creates it on the turn right. coming up. So how much did you play um, the DC? A little game? bit, not a lot. I, put, I They had green arrow that was like exactly mm. this. You could tap the card to give you the oh, trick that's right. arrows. And they, they had Batman as well that could add bat gadgets to your hand and stuff too. That was yep. like the leader of ability, which I think there was a lot of them it was, was broken. Batman was just the best thing in the game by far. Oh, yeah. That well, the whole entire game was broken and is now already completely shut down. But I'm sure that the people at Second Dinner were playing it, and they may have found something in that that they wanted to transfer. Sure. I mean, you can find inspiration anywhere. I think yeah. the lack of mobile is what hurt that game for the most part. No one wants to, and the monetization and the balancing right. woes. But no one wants to play only on PC or Steam for a card game. Card games are like perfect for mobile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other ones though, we have Hulkling, Marvel Boy, and Wiccan and Speed. I don't know much about any of these characters. I'm going to be real with you. So I don't feel qualified to talk about them or guess what they'll do. I guess I could guess Speed is going to do something with Move. 
that's kind of easy. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, uh, well, no. Yeah. So here's the, so speed is Quicksilver and Wiccan is Scarlet Witch. Mm-hmm. You can just kind of basically do that. There, obviously, there's nuances, but that's what they right. are. Right. Yeah. It would be fun to have a like fast character power that's not Quicksilver, because <laughs> Quicksilver is completely wasted right now. Yeah, and they're never going to change him. What do you want your speedster power to be? Is it just that move effect? Like he can move himself? I mean, I would want it to be something beyond move because there's already, you already have Human Torch, you have a Nightcrawler. Uh, like the the speed stuff, you don't need to be move centric. Um, move actually, yeah. in my mind, fits better with like actual like acrobatics, like Spider Man and those kind of cards. Like, so yeah, the web slinging is or very teleportation, cool. which is Nightcrawler, or Doctor Strange, right? Um, so right. speed stuff, I would, I don't know how you would do it because I understand Quicksilver. He's not good. Um, if he was a no. one, three, he'd be good. Um, sure. but, but I don't really want speed to release as a one three or even as like the three cost that comes into your hand on turn three. Like I don't want that as a thing. But maybe it could be something that like coming back to hand, kind of like a Kitty Pride, but like a different rendition okay. of it. What if it was um Yeah. Every time you play him, like what if he's a one one like Kitty is, or maybe make him a one two. Um and rather than him gaining when you come to hand, he just buffs something in that location. What if, you know, it's like a Red Hulk situation, but he makes himself cheaper? Like, every turn he's in hand, you get an effect, like, let's go faster, and he gets mm. cheaper, and then he can, like, jump to the board. That could be it. I just don't know. Like, speed's or, a weird I mean, power to make we've, work in this game. Yeah, in a card right. game. It would be, it's more like, it would be a cool effect, but I don't know if it's thematic for him, but somebody that every turn they're in hand, they make another card in your hand cheaper. That would be really cool. I mean, card draw is what I think of when I think of like speed, but like we don't want more card draw. No, right. That that effect gets unbalanced way too quickly with a 12 card deck. Uh, then Wiccan like could just change locations, I guess, or like add copies of stuff. Like you could just look at Scarlet Witch or like Nico and be like, pick your poison. There's a whole lot of options here. Um, they could also do something completely different. I don't know. I, 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 right. I just, it feels like sorcery and magic goes the way of location change or move is where they're really only at. I guess Wong is on reveals. So, yeah, I feel like it's all over the place. You got Celine doing some weird stuff. So, I don't know. It could be the the sky's the limit on Wiccan when you have a power set like that. Marvel Boy's giving me real Star Lord vibes, but I don't think we're gonna get a Guardian's power. No. So we'll see what that. Can I ask you? Um, because we've had people, we've heard this before, this complaint of like, and you've seen Reddit threads on and stuff like that. It's like, what cards do you think should be swapped as far as their powers go thematically? Oh, and the one yeah. that always comes up is every time. Doctor Strange and Wong because Wong is the master of portals. It makes more sense for him to move something through a portal than Doctor Strange. Um, though I understand yeah. when you think of Doctor Strange in the movies for the most part, the thing I think of the most is like portals to other dimensions, like going into the mirror dimension for himself against Spider-Man or like the fight against Thanos where he's having yeah. Spider-Man pop through portals. No, it's using the mirror dimension. Yeah, using to, the yeah, portals yeah. or something like that. So like I, I get it thematically. But let's say Second Dinner decided later down the road that they wanted to do that. They were like, you know what? We actually want to okay. do this. We're going to, we're going to announce that we are going to swap the effects of these two cards. And Wong will now be reskin as uh, Dr. Strange and vice versa. They stay the same respectively in their own spots, meaning Wong, who is now Dr. Strange is still a series three card and vice versa. But the caveat is there's an alert that comes up on your, uh, on your thing. When you open up the app, Maybe it's a one-time thing, or maybe it's like every time you open for the next like 48 or uh, next week, right? And the alert says very simply, hey, 
here's the news. Here are these cars that switched. Here's your one-time opportunity to swap all effects of like your crackle splits and stuff. You can do a one-time swap and all of your wrong oh, splits okay. become Dr. Strange splits and vice versa. That way, you know, the cards still function the same way. And if you are an avid player of either one, the switch doesn't bother you. The, the will, yeah. theoretically. Right. Would you be okay <laughs> with that as an, as a thing? Yeah, no, I'd be fine with seeing those cards switch places. Like, do you think that's even a those good two... like way to go about it? Because like the biggest reason they won't do it is because people have committed resources and variants and splits. Variants I can't fix. I can't fix the variant thing. No, but I can fix right. the splits, and especially now because right. splits are universal across a card, not the variants. It just yeah goes to random pool. Here's the thing. I don't think I would even care if they swapped the splits for me. Like, it's just just change the card names and they're basically change the card stat lines and abilities, but then they just mirror each other. I think the reason they won't do it particularly is because people have already learned the yeah, game. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, 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 it's too messy. They won't do it. It was just a fun little yeah. hypothetical if we could uh, make it work. It would be fun right. if they did. I don't think there's really yeah. many other ones. I've seen like Taskmaster uh with like i think mystique was what people wanted at one point i don't remember and i was like oh but that's like so their their abilities are already thematic yeah so you could argue a while that it's more thematic to change them but i'm fine with either one all right coming up next week season opener battle pass card Uh, and a spotlight card so the Let's next week is down. Blink for the Battle Pass. And then we're going to have Nocturne. Nocturne. So let's look at Blink first. This one's easy. She's still a 5-6. On real swap, the last card you played with a higher cost card from your deck. I'm still sticking by the idea that she's just going to be good. You play a 4 cost. Jubilee, Jubilee. into Blink is right, money, exactly. baby. And... You don't really have to think about too hard what you do as far as like, well, what other big things do I play? Just play a couple. Just play like two sixes, another one or two fives, and then some rampish stuff, right? She also could just be... You actually get away with it being a very selective number because Blink is going to guarantee pulling the more expensive card. So you don't play other fives if you want to be very particular about her. Then you can trade that Juby for a guaranteed six. Agreed. And like, yeah, she's just going to be very good. I have nothing much to say about her. Yes, there will be a specific deck where she shines the most. Yes, it'll take a bit to figure that out, but it won't take as long as you probably would expect for most new cards, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's going to play, <clears throat> I mean, obviously similar to the Jubilee Lockjaw decks, but also kind of like the Black Knight decks of just like, oh, they got Infinite. Like, what am I going to do? Right. Kind of stuff. Like, Which actually... Yeah. Interesting package would be this with the Infinite Ebony Maw uh, War Machine stuff. Ooh. I was actually going to say just directly to Black Knight, like have your plan be in a Black Knight deck B, Jubilee into Blink. Right. Yeah. Well, if you do the uh, the uh, Ebony Maw whatever thing and you let's say you wait till five and you play War Machine and you yeah. don't draw your Infinite and you're like, well... Easy oh, peasy. True. I just play Blink in my Ebony Maw, and then I get my Infinite. It's the same thing. Or even on to War Machine, right? Yeah, right. Oh, swap the last card you pull. Yeah, so it's guaranteed the last card you played, not like a card Correct. at this it's, location. So it would be, it would War, be Machine. The War Machine. Yeah, yeah. Who should hit uh, if she's like the only other five or whatever. The more expensive if, card. Yeah, your Infinite. So yeah, I think there's that. that's an interesting way to go about yeah. it. I like it. Also, I mean, like, is this terrifying for any living tribunal wombo combos? I guess the th- the problem with that is living tribunal doesn't want to trade anything it played. It needs to keep on building the stack. Um, it can also be your fish for Hella, you know. Um, I love fishing for Hella. I played, yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> Hella is actually playing Go Fish. And so, it's yeah, go I mean, fish for Hella, Hella, she's pretty good because <laughs> if you whiff on getting Hella, you could still win potentially if you just get one of your big cards. 
Sure. Oh, that one hurt. Oh, you ever sneeze and it kind of like comes from your chest a little bit of like force? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I'm dying. I'm sorry, audio listeners. I hope okay. I wasn't too loud. I tried looking away. God, this this You're already be going to be doing some this episode is going to make one, me so. want to just die. And you make me want to die. I'll never be good enough. Pretty reckless listener. You make me want to hey. die. I love pretty reckless. Uh, <laughs> no, she's, Taylor Momsen is fantastic. So. Okay, so yeah, Blink is a buy. Yeah, Blink well, is yeah, a buy. It's a, it's a season pass card. You should mostly be getting every season pass, even if the card is inexplic- inexplicitly weak. Only if that's in your budget, don't don't make it yes, change your buying yes. habits. But if you're only buying a couple battle passes a year... I think this could legitimately be one that yeah, you go I was, for. If, if you have the ability to spend any amount of money on Marvel Snap, the best way to do so is the season pass is what I mean by that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so going on to the next one, which is the first week, it's Nocturne, the daughter of... Bit of a different story. Oh, do, do you don't think it's a buy? Okay, well, let's get into it. So she's the daughter of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch, a 3-5. Isn't this so thematic? Scarlet Witch is a what, Teddy? Oh, she's a 2-3. And two, she three. does what? She changes hey, what the location. Is, what's Nightcrawler? What's his stats? What he does? Happens to be a 1-2. He can move All one right. time. The effect of this is a 3-5. Oh, a 2-3 plus a 1-2 is a 3-5. Cool. And this can move once. Okay. And this changes the location that it moves to. Huh. It's poetry it's and beautiful. game design. Also, I love Nocturne as a character because it's so funny. Yeah, I blew my blew my friend's mind because he asked me who is Nocturne, and I was like, "Well, that's the uh-huh. daughter of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch." He's like, "I thought Scarlet Witch killed all the mutants. Doesn't she like hate them?" And I'm like, "Well, that's House of M, and it's kind of a tougher story than that. It's mostly a a, a thing of like self hatred a little bit too." Uh, also, you know, that happened in yeah. 2005 Nocturne first came out and was introduced in 2004. Also, it's a not 616. It's a different universe in which this happens in which they have the baby. So there's that on top of which Scarlet, which technically until 2015 was a mutant, uh, and was actually the daughter of Magneto, uh, until in 2015, it was retconned yep. or discovered in the, in the, in the main line of like, Oh, she's actually not a mutant. She was just born with magical powers, but was also an experiment from high, uh, high Evo. Yeah. I hate comic books sometimes. Like it's just why, <laughs> why? <laughs> and the MCU decides with all of that. No, she was experimented right. on with the, the reality. Yeah. Stone. The, the, uh, <laughs> the origin of Quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch, like you think of Scarlet Witch now and you're like, Oh, established great MCU character. But you go back and watch, you know, Avengers age of Ultron. You're like, also, not a very good movie in its own right. It's like a five, I would say, out of ten. It's just, it's, it's just fine. mid. It's forgettable. It has some very good moments. Yeah, but Josh Whedon, like he and his, well, him as a person, bad. Then on top of that, him as a filmmaker, and like I love Buffy. I love the campiness of Buffy. I'm a, I, I grew up watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it's just oozes Josh Whedon when I watch it now, and it works in that kind of thing, but. It's, it's small doses kind of thing, you know? Yeah. No, no. I just love the lines from Ultron and the lines from Vision. Vision has some really great there are writing. No strings on me. Yeah, so Nocturne, I think she's but sneaky Nocturne, good. I don't think it's going to be a Ooh, great we're at, a, we're at an it's impasse here. Nah, why? Uh, so she's a 3-5. What makes her good? <clears throat> why? She's a 3-5. Those are yep, those are good something. stats. Okay, that so does at, something. We're at the bare minimum of what True. makes a good card, right? She's a three five that does something. Yeah, she can move once. That's nice. That's flexibility. We love that in a card. And location, yeah. you know, disruption is very powerful in the game and very threatening. How many times have you True. lost because someone had a movable card uh, because of New York? And you're like, or just vision in general. We talked about this in their most annoying cards last week, where it's like, duh, do they move it? Do they not? And let's say Limbo's on the field and she's on the field and it's turn six. Are they going to move it and change Limbo? 
it, it's kind of like when they have when you saw them play what's it called earlier um snow guard and you're like i know they have the hawk i know they can yeah. turn off limbo that one's a fun like one game she presents that and and that's only yeah. one thing and then on top of that be able to move to other things and like turn it off last second um like other locations that can make a, a big difference i don't know like i i think she's gonna be sneaky good now is she a snap by no let's be clear on that she's not a snap by because she's right. generic she's a generic card that doesn't finish the game or start the game she's just a generic card that's like the this is the epitome of I don't have Nocturne. What replace with? And you're like, Spider-Man, I guess. That's fine. And then you just call it a deck. And the deck is mostly okay. Um, yeah. You can run a lot of different stuff. Like, she's going to compete largely with Jeff, I feel like, in terms of, like, comparisons. Mm -hmm. Just mid-stat line, but then the movement flexibility. And I think Jeff still takes the lead because he's more affordable. Yeah, and you can play him so right on top easier. of unplayable locations. And you can, yeah, you can play him directly to those spots you really wanted him to get into. There's also the handicap on Nocturne is that often the flexibility of being able to move a card is advantageous when that locked out location stays what mm -hmm. it is. Like you want to be able to move there and you want your opponent not to be able to get there. Obviously, you can create the same effect by just moving Nocturne on the final turn of the game. But if you're in a position where you want to move her earlier than that, the location will then change and then will likely allow the opponent to play back in that spot. I think she's just going to be a sneaky good card. Like, I don't think she's going to like blow anyone away, but she's going to win games and that like in and of itself is going to be fine. Like she's, she's going to be a card that can win you games and be one that people forget about. And it's like, Oh, like the, I, I thought that knocked her moves already or whatever. Like, especially if you have like so, other location disruption in your deck and it's like, did she move? Do you remember? Okay. Yeah. I mean, fair. If you want to really <clears throat> double down, then you could run that. If you like that utility deck, do you ever run her instead of Jeff? Probably not, Jeff. So here's the thing. Remember, the reason Mobius sees less play now in most decks um, is because three is where you really start developing your own game plan, and the reason yeah. he was in every deck as a two is because twos are mostly free. So there's no real cost oh, yeah. to playing it's a two. That's why have. Jeff is like the ultimate like. I don't know what to put in my other two slot. Let's throw in Jeff. Um, Nocturne doesn't yep. quite fit that bill because she's a three cost, but that doesn't mean she's not going to be good. Uh, Jeff will always be better. But. Right. What do you see as the, what do you see as the best location manipulation cards? It's like Quake and Legion right now. Are you running uh, Noc Le Nocturne instead of Quake uh, or Legion? Over Quake? Maybe. Uh, maybe over Quake. Quake has a little bit more of a surprise factor because this you play and you set it up. Um, but this one offers more mind games and better body. Uh, also, just a better rate in general, 2-3 versus 3-5. Um, but Legion is yeah. by far the best one. I don't think it's particularly close. Okay, yeah. I'm running Legion a lot right now, and he's stealing cubes left and right. Me too. It feels good. feels good to get rid of that limbo, and it's like, you were setting up. Get got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like this is this yeah. is a great month to look forward to. Uh, we'll we'll talk more about the other cards as we get closer to them in the weeks. We went over these in one of our big data mine episodes not too long ago. Uh, I don't think I don't have anything else on the docket. If you guys haven't seen it, go back. I've seen so many people sleeping on Namora, and me and Brad break it down. Yeah, we think Namora can be pretty cool. We'll we'll definitely talk more about that soon enough. Um, but yeah, if you want to see episodes early. You can go to patreon.com slash can't stop snapping. And by the way, if you're not already watching this on YouTube, you should do that now. And you should go sub to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash can't stop snapping. We're trying to get monetized on there. We're getting very close. We're doing pretty well so far. It's pretty nice. Uh, the other thing, the other reason you want to go sub to the YouTube channel is because bonus episodes like the bounce bonus episode that's going to be going live, uh, I believe tomorrow on YouTube um, is going to is that's where that's where it lives usually you can see them a week early on patreon bonus episodes but then when they do come out to the public it's through youtube not spotify not google podcasts all that good stuff so there's another reason for that otherwise we appreciate you you guys are the best we could not do this without you i'm gonna have such a wonderful time editing this episode with the amount of times that the calls dropped for no damn reason <sighs> but teddy take us away 
What can you do? Well, don't stop snapping. Bye, everybody. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by Brad Saffer and Teddy Ninja, originally created by Michael Thurman.